my dear friend Firoz and all those uh, who come for uh, today's program, I begin by saying uh, I'm sorry that I came late. My flight got delayed by more than six hours from Delhi. But uh, whatever I heard, and I'm sure you will all agree, that Feroz has added to our understanding and our information about what is happening in Syria and in that part of the world. Feroz has visited uh, Syria thrice. I have visited only once, and that was in 2002 when I accompanied our former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee to Damascus. It's a beautiful city. Of course, it was uh, not the time of war, which has destroyed so much of Syria now. And whatever I saw of Damascus reminded me of uh, the very rich civilization that uh, Syria has cradled thousands of years ago. We went to the main mosque, I, huh? Umayyad Mosque, and uh, it was amazing to see that this is a mosque, but there is also a shrine, a, a church inside the mosque, and also a synagogue. Hmm? Not exactly a synagogue, but uh, uh, some symbol of, uh, of uh, Judaism. Which goes to show that this is an area this is a part of the world where the, all the three religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, they coexisted because the basic teaching of all three religions, the basic teaching is one of brotherhood. And Islam recognizes and respects the prophets of Judaism and Christianity. Assad had just taken over from uh, his father, Hafiz al-Assad, who had ruled uh, Syria for many years and uh, Feroz rightly pointed out that uh, it was a, and it continues to be a repressive state. Syria is not a, is not really a mature democracy of the kind that we have in India, the kind that exists elsewhere in the world. But nevertheless, friends, it was, uh, it was truly a, A learning experience to know that here is a here is a ruler who belongs to a minority in the Syrian society, Alawite. His father was also Alawite. And he is accepted, not perhaps by hundred percent of the population, but a significant majority of the population and which has subsequently been proved in these several years of uh, highly destructive war inside Syria. You know, the main question that we should ask is, how is it that this man who belongs to a minority sect in Syria, where, as Firoz pointed out, even the army is about 80% Sunni. The population itself is more than, is about that, um, it's a Sunni majority population. 
so how is it that in a sunni majority society with an army which has overwhelming majority comprising sunnis how has assad survived he could not have survived it's it's very plain he could not have survived without a certain degree of uh, internal support hmm? what it shows friends in my opinion is that there is something called syrian nationalism hmm? what holds the people of syria together is not their religious identity or sub religious identity but their national identity as syrians hmm? when you have a when you have your motherland which has been invaded by people from 100 countries around the world you know would a sunni syrian like it you know let's ask ourselves you know it's very plain you know we may have let's say in india we have a major internal problem tomorrow hmm? we are unhappy with the government we have some internal clash very very serious but would we be happy would any section of indian society be happy majority or minority if in the pretext of that internal problem people around the world come here to fight either on side a side b or side c no most certainly a majority of our people would unite under the banner of indian nationalism so the same thing explains why assad has been supported by his own army and by a significant section of his his society so one big learning for me uh, firoz put it very very well you know we we tend to call what is happening in syria as syrian civil war and he and he said it's not a civil war it's an international war imposed on syria there is a certain civil conflict associated with it which should not be ignored because there was a section of syrian population which was unhappy with repression unhappy with dictatorship unhappy also with the fact that uh, power goes from father to son hmm? so they of course as you know there was another reason for uh, internal uh, dislike is that he was secular and a section of society wanted syria a majority muslim country to become islamic that also is a source of hmm? all things considered the fact is that you know if if the syrian army which is sunni did not want a minority leader to rule them as he rightly said it would have taken just two weeks to finish off assad hmm? and linking that situation to india i really like what firoz said that for those who say that how can we have a minority muslim and you know in fact not even a, a, a real muslim alawites are not considered real muslims by by wahhabis etc how can they rule us so he gave the indian example you know suppose you know section of hindus say how can dr manmohan singh be our prime minister how can someone else you know how can sonia gandhi who is a christian you know so there were people who said this hmm? and frankly if we are really a secular nation we should have absolutely no objection tomorrow for an indian muslim to be india's prime minister hmm? so that is the that is the day that we should see that is where we should all move so the fact that someone who belongs to a minority who is a ruler of syria it is not the source of uh, what is happening in syria i think there are bigger conspiracies at play which firoz uh, in his uh, in his very well researched uh, talk he highlighted 
the lesson for us friends and this is where india has a big role you know we are a nation of 1.3 billion people and sometimes you know we don't we don't realize that we have a duty towards the international community you know the fate of this world cannot be left the fate of this world cannot be left to americans and the french and the britishers you know who don't they have no compunction whatsoever what right does britain or france have to go and attack libya or iraq what right do they have or for that matter america america there is not a single year after world war 2 when america has not been at war somewhere or the other around the world is this the kind of world we want to see which means that the lesson that we should draw from syria and of course not only it has not begun with syria it has begun with the korean war the vietnam war the other wars and most certainly the the 2003 war in iraq you know as was pointed out why did america invade iraq what was the reason it was based on a lie a falsehood that saddam hussein has amassed weapons of mass destruction and the un commission itself said that no you know he might have been a dictator but he had not amassed weapons of mass destruction either to use against his own people or certainly about, you know but what right moral right did america have to go and invade iraq both from the sky and on the ground and kill a million people cause the deaths of million people and destabilize the entire iraqi nation and the surroundings don't they have a responsibility to to know that this is something wrong and which is where a country like india because we are all indians we are discussing this issue from an indian perspective what is india's responsibility in my opinion friends india's responsibility is to have a foreign policy more proactive a a foreign policy that does not stay neutral ye hamara nahi hai unko jo karna hai karne do nahi we are 1.3 billion people we are an ancient civilization that has always respected the right of people to profess their own faith hmm? that has proclaimed the virtue of peaceful coexistence so we should play whatever role we can to bring peace to this very unhappy part of the world and for this we should also realize that if we there is another thing friends this is my my understanding that we must do everything we can to protect to safeguard peace stability social stability not just political stability but even social stability inside india so that no violent force in the name of any religion can weaken it because if we allow that to happen then we will have the al qaeda's and the isis to start coming into our part of the, our country and this also imposes another responsibility on us that in as short a time as possible we should normalize our relations with pakistan and with afghanistan we should we should play a role in bringing peace to afghanistan which is our civilizational neighbor why should afghanistan be a theater for big powers to come and invade they have killed millions of people and that is the reason for much of what is happening in you know in our own neighborhood and within our own country no this must all stop so i am very happy uh, firoz for uh, giving this talk 
and I do hope that more uh, Indians go to Syria, see what is happening, more Indian journalists go, report what is happening from our perspective, from a, from a perspective of truth, and it's very courageous of you and friends like you, you know, to have taken this initiative to go Syria. I mean, there may be other, other points of view. I'm sure that uh, in this audience and in Mumbai and elsewhere, there are people who hold some other point of view, and there should be an open discussion. We are not here to say that Assad is a great man. Hmm? It is for the people of Syria to decide, you know, who should be ruled, who they should be ruled by. It is not for the French president or the American president or some other president to say Assad should go. You know, if someone were to say, no, Modi, no, Modi should not rule, you know, what kind? We are a democracy. Hmm? It is for the Indian people to decide who should be our prime minister or who should not be our prime minister. Hmm? So, I'm happy that we've had this uh, discussion. I was actually going to speak much later at the conclusion of uh, the, uh, the program, but uh, since you asked me, I have expressed my, my views, but uh, we certainly should have a wider discussion with people in the audience to express their views and uh, maybe ask some questions. Thank you, friends.